Welcome back, everybody. We are back once again in the crypt for another amazing interview. And this is going to be, this is one I have been looking forward to in a lot of ways, but you know, it's a double edged sword because this is part two that I promised you guys that I would be doing with my amazing guest. We did part one, I just uploaded it a couple days ago, and we dove into, I think, you know, great topics, ones that need to be talked about a lot more. That is for sure. And we kind of talked about energy vampires. We got into the dark side of the porn industry. Very interesting. And I promised you guys that would we would be doing a part two. And that's what we're going to be doing this evening. So as I was saying, it is a, definitely a double-edged sword. Excited to do this. But then the topics that we're going to be getting into this evening are pretty dark. So that was kind of a, a negative to it. But I still say this has to be talked about, guys. This is topics that need to be coming out and discussed. And it's starting to happen slowly. But it has it needs to get way more attention. So I'm glad that we're here. We're doing this. And I'm excited to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and welcome my guest once again here. Jamie J to the show. We did. We said we'd be here for part two, Jamie. And I got you here. We are here. Welcome once again. Oh, absolutely. Me too. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. That is for sure. Uh, even though it is a dark subject, <laughs> we're going to dive into it. So the subject that I wanted to get into with you and let you walk us through this and is definitely a dark topic, as I was saying, but needs to be talked about. We're talking about satanic ritual abuse. I know that you look into this. You've discussed this before. It's something that you actually really dive into. So let's get into it. Where do you want to start with this, like to walk people through this? Um, I think I'll just give like a really brief um, kind of explanation of what SRA is, because I don't think a lot of people really know what it is. Um, and then um, I'll try not to uh, confuse people. I'll just kind of give them some places they can go into more research themselves if they want. Okay. Um, so I think what's really important to understand about satanic ritual abuse is it's a form of mind control. Um, and basically the Satanism is a theme that's used in order to do mind control on children. Um, and then, because children are being programmed while their brain is forming, they're basically like forging people into um, kind of programmable soldiers um, through trauma. And so it's based a lot on psychology. Um, there's a lot of um, like developmental kind of traumas they do at certain ages of childhood development. Um, it, they do a lot of emotional trauma um, and then they do a lot of physical um torture too which causes the mind to basically um blank out and then it's in a programmable state okay so human beings um kind of have a shut off valve at a certain uh level like we can only handle so much and then our soul will leave the body at, or our consciousness basically just goes to like a recording screen and um your kind of conscious self isn't there anymore while stuff's being recorded um and so for people that think maybe this stuff all sounds like conspiracy kind of stuff, I would really recommend that people just start educating yourself on PTSD and how memory works. And so once you kind of understand how PTSD works on the brain, which is really it interferes with the way that things are recorded and cataloged in your brain. Um, and so when somebody has PTSD, some, like an event wasn't cataloged properly in their mind. And that's why it keeps like coming back up and re-traumatizing them like a trigger, right? Okay. Because it wasn't actually filed properly into the computer brain system. Um, and so these people that do programming, they really understand that and they know how to do it deliberately. Um, they really know it's, it's a real art and a science. And they basically know exactly how to... Um, use trauma on a person to the point where they have that shut off valve reaction and then they can go in and program in um, different parts in the brain and um, the different parts are kept compartmentalized from even the person themselves so a person can be programmed and have no idea right like everything is repressed and kept in a compartment and the compartments are kept separate from each other so you could see how um if somebody had access to a child, they could basically program a person with a bunch of different parts that don't know about each other. And then they don't even know about it themselves. So they are completely at the mercy and will of the programmer. Um, wow. And so this has been done for a long time. 
but it really started to go and become sort of industrialized and mechanized after World War II. So it, Joseph Mengele and other people um, and other scientists and psychologists and psychiatrists and medical doctors um, really perfected the science of torture and how, you know, like they know exactly how many volts of electricity or how long to hold the head underwater, or they know exactly how far you can push a human being without actually killing them or making them go insane. So it's a, it's a very fine line to get somebody to dissociate without them actually becoming like completely scrambled right. or dying. Um, and so they've really like fine tuned it and kept really good records. And so they've trained certain people to be able to do it. And now that they know how to do it, it's, it's really easy for them to do. As long as they have access to children, they know exactly how to do it now. So they've done it to a lot of people over a long period of time. And so there's actually quite a few people on the earth right now that have gone through programming and have no idea. And so um, these people can be um, basically activated at any time to um, obey commands of their programmer. So it's kind of scary watching everything unfold on the planet right now because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that um, are programmed and are dissociative and don't know they're part of a bigger agenda that can be basically accessed through their subconscious mind um, at any time. So I, don't, wow. I think that's kind of like a brief explanation of what it is. But um, people that think it's, you know, oh, I don't believe in, you know, Satanism or stuff like that. It doesn't really matter because we have um, kind of archetypal fears that get passed on epigenetically through humans. That's why we're all scared of snakes and spiders. Like mm -hmm. it's just in our DNA to be scared of snakes, snakes and spiders because over time that's just been passed on. And right. so with all this trauma that's been passed on, like there, you know, people are, are scared of Satanism. Like it's in our DNA to be scared of that stuff, especially the fact that they do it on little children. It's going to really terrify them every time if they do any type of thing with a satanic theme. Um, but a lot of people that do it are not, um, people that are, you know, druids out in the forest. It's actually, um, like psychiatrists and people that are working through the military, um, through organized crime. It's, you know, through the healthcare system, like it's very scientific and it's very systematic. It's not, um, kind of, you know, that a lot of what sense. Don't yeah. in Hollywood. Well, that's what I was going to say, but you know, I'm glad you kind of said that, Jamie, because that's what I think of a lot. Of, and I talk to people about this because it's a fascinating subject to me. And as I was saying in our first interview, I want to know my enemy. I want to know what we're up against. So I, I'm one of those people that will dive into it. A lot of people are scared to even look into it. Not me. I want. I'm. That's why I love doing these uh, interviews with you and other people because I'm learning and I want to know what their agenda is and how they're doing it. And I think I'm, it's great that you brought that up, that it's not... Like as as soon as you talk about Satanism, or at least the people I talk to, they automatically go to that Hollywood thing where you, they picture people in robes in the forest and they're sacrificing a, an animal and they're they're doing chanting and all of that. And it's what you're saying is that's very low. Uh, that's very low level, yeah. And that's more theatrics. Like a lot of it is really just using torture and trauma um, for the mind. Um, but I mean, it, it is satanic. <laughs> I mean depending on how many layers you want to go into it, like they, they actually do attach demons and do demonology, like even through the military and stuff. And so I know that's kind of hard for a lot of people to wrap their head around. Um, but like an organization like the military is a satanic organization. Like even the fact that it's set up a, as like a hierarchy of oppression, um, that's really like a mirror of uh, the, the satanic structures in mm -hmm. other dimensions. And so um, like they do actually do that kind of stuff in the military. And for a lot of people that don't know in the United States, like the military, um, the chaplain handbook, like the official religion of the military is actually Satanism. And they actually have a chaplain's handbook written by Michael Aquino for wow. Naval intelligence. Like it's official. It's not a conspiracy. <laughs> you can kind of look into it. And so um, there's different types of Satanism. So when you think about um, what most people think of Satanism, they think about like what you just talked about, right? Like you think about the Church of Satan or you think about the Satanic Temple or like these really liberal kind of people that are actually just atheists. Um, and then they're using the Satanic archetype just kind of to get a reaction out of people. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't, they're not actually, um, they're, they're the lowest level, right? Because they don't actually even understand the interdimensional aspects of things. If you get higher up, um, like with the military, they really understand the interdimensional aspect of things. And so um, like they there's kind of like a agenda to make that stuff look stupid. And so people like that um, are these kind of public personas of the churches of Satan and stuff like they're supposed to make it look like a joke. Like that's very intentional. 
that makes a lot of sense, right? Make it make it kind of a joke, and then people kind of don't take it. They don't take it serious. They're like, oh, those are those people out in the woods or in graveyards doing these weird rituals. But it's so much darker than that. And wow, you've given me so much to unpack. I got questions just like crazy now. So what you're saying from the research you've done that this goes all the way back to like World War II when they started doing experimenting on people and they they were figuring out how to perfect the this technique yeah i mean torture is an art right like you can't do too much and you gotta you have to do enough to get the desired effect but if you do too much you kill your subject right so it's like it's a very much a science and an art like to how much they can do um to people but satanic ritual abuse has gone back based since the beginning of time like whatever people want to believe that is in their worldview but like if you go back in history there's there's always been people mind controlling other people through the use of trauma right Mm -hmm. so even if you look like um, in the Egyptian temples, they would have um, kind of like those old sun wheels or whatever, and it would make the light flicker and that would put people in a trance, right? And if you think about all the slavery in Egypt and stuff, it's like, how did they really do like that slavery? There's a mind control aspect to being enslaved, right? So they would do stuff like that. Um, Satanism has been around for a long time as the old religion, right? So people have known, like, if you look at old, you know, Quaker witches and stuff like that, like, there's always been people that knew how to use trauma to change the minds of other people and then manipulate their minds. So there's really crude methods all through history. And I mean, you can look into other countries too, like into like um, the history of like Santeria or all these other kind of like Voodoo and voodoo religions. Like they all have the aspect of, you know, um, mind controlling other people through black ma- magic and dark arts, right? Like it's been there forever. Um, but yeah, World War II was when they really made it scientific. It's really scientific Satanism. It's like the scientific method applied to the strategic use and applied use of Satanism as a trauma base for mind control. Wow. So it goes back. Yeah. Like, and, and uh, that's really, it's true what you say, but I'm thinking now about back to Egypt and then all these other, you think of voodoo. I think of like, you hear about people getting, uh, turning into zombies and that in, in voodoo and stuff. And I, but it's what I get what you're saying. It's their mind can, they're, they're breaking people's minds is a good way to say it. Yeah. And so there's, there's many crude methods to it, but now because it's been so scientific and because they've added technology to it now, a lot of it can be done through virtual reality or like you think of things like the metaverse or these kind of virtual reality, um, like synthetic satanic dimensions that have been overlapped into God's creation. So they can go in there and they'll have like ritual chambers and stuff in these VR rooms. And like, they can do very realistic rituals in there, um, which will affect the psyche of all the people in there. And like, that's how ritual works is it goes into the minds of the people that participate and then they create it out of their minds, right? Like they're the conduit and they're the medium for the effects to come through the people. So, um, I mean, the stuff in the metaverse or the use of virtual reality, I mean, they can record, I don't, did you see that movie, um, strange days? I think it was called with Juliet Lewis. So yeah, yeah, they, so if you think about something like that, where they can, um, like record with all of the senses, an experience so they can um go and do these really horrific things and record it like that and then they can just put it on a vr on somebody there's no bruises on them but their nervous system and your subconscious mind is going to register it exactly like it happened to you so like they can do a lot of really traumatic things without having to like hide a body or have even bruises or anything right like they can really just do it directly into the mind now and have the exact same effect as if they actually did it to the physical body wow so that, yeah the, that's crazy I'm, and I'm thinking about, too, like how they're using tech against us. I've talked a lot about that on my show, actually, because a lot of people don't even realize the power of this of technology. I mean, people are getting dumber now with technology, in mm-hmm. my opinion. I know yeah, so many yeah. people that they know their phone, but they couldn't operate a laptop. They couldn't set up a meeting like we're doing. Zero knowledge. And then that's what they're using against us. I'm glad that you're bringing that up because they are using this tech against us and people don't even understand it. And then, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up um, wow. because I've actually been researching this week um, and I'm not totally an expert on this yet, but I'm on, I'm on a trail of something that is really the connection between artificial intelligence and autism. So basically, like if you look at what AI is, AI is like an autistic brain. Like mm-hmm. it's that's really what it is. Right. So they want to make more autistic people so that they're more like the AI so that at one point they can merge them together. Right. They have to make them more compatible. Mm-hmm. So even though. um 
like you said, some people are really smart in some areas and then really dumb in others. And really that's what autism is because in autism, they have what's called savantism, which is like, they can be extremely intelligent in certain ways, especially with like technology and things like that, like, and really digital kind of thinking, right brain thinking. Um, and so, um, but then they'll be really um, not able to function in other areas. Right. So it's like the brain only has so much, um, you know, energy to go to certain areas and it's so they'll put it all to one and so there's I believe like a real agenda to genetically modify people um, into an autistic state and then also um, a lot of SRA actually can present as autism so a lot of people that have been programmed may have an autistic front altar which may seem from the outside to be a really low intelligent person who needs like assistance in daily living but really they may be a genius who can be activated into another part of their brain and go and like do amazing things that other people couldn't do and so I think there's actually a lot of people like that that have been put out in society with kind of a a front cover of autism but actually um, have been also been programmed with SRA as well. Wow okay that's crazy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah like so I, the I technology just, is wow. like they're they're basically um making people more like robots and then they want to make the robots more like people with machine learning by us adding the emotion to machine learning so once they can get a that that zero point where the two things are kind of on the same level then they can merge them together and that's the agenda that is the yeah i try to tell people that too that that's what they're trying to do i mean i've and you hear people like elon musk and stuff like that with the the neural net and everything and to me it's so obvious like that that's what they're trying to do. They want us plugged right in 24 seven because once they have us in that state, then we really own, we're already owned. I say pretty much, they have pretty much got what they want. But I mean, now if we're going to directly plug in, nothing good is going to come out of this. And that's where they want to bring us. That, that right. like, that's what you're saying is that that's like, and I think of virtual reality, I have a friend who's really big in a virtual reality. Like he's got to have the latest goggles and, all of the interface and it's so real when I, I was, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And I'm like, this is yeah. what they're going to try to do. And they are doing. Yeah. And I, I recommend everybody just go try VR. Just like, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it all the time. Cause I, like I did it and I was like, I'm really glad I did this so that I really understand right. how it works. Because the one I did was a, like an underwater one where I was on a pirate ship and there's like this big shark that comes at you. And I know it's fake, right? But like when that shark was coming at me, I was terrified. Like I, even though I knew it wasn't real, like your nervous system and your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. So it really affects you neurologically, like even if your critical mind knows it's fake. And yep. so to go and experience that yourself will really change your perception of what VR is. But I think it's really dangerous. Like it, people can really get addicted to it. And it's really I, like, my friend is. Yep. Yeah. He, he has a simulation like, uh, like you were in that shark one. he had one like that, but he put me in a plain one where you, where, uh, they tried to make it kind of like not realistic. I think so people would actually have a, a heart attack watching this, but what it was, was like an alien hits the jumps on the wing of the plane and disables the engine and you're crashing. And it's like what you would go through through a plane crash. And I can tell you, Jamie, it was so real what I was going through that I had to take them off. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, it yeah. was like I was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I mean, the stuff that I did is just with the goggles, right? But that's that's really low level. Like the military stuff, they have full body suits where it's like hitting every um, like neural pathway and all your meridians. And it's like, it's way, way, nothing compared to the one you go and do with goggles. Like, wow. So that's, yeah, that's what they want. Like, I mean, it's crazy. And what I want, but I wanted to ask you, cause we're talking about like, when does, when did they, so you're saying that they want children. So they're, I would assume that their main goal to do the, the SRA is to get children very young. So now are they, where are they getting it? Because I've heard, seen documentaries, I've listened to people speak on it, where there's even towns that are fully satanic, like like yeah. the whole town is in on it kind of thing. And it's a, it's a, there's a abuse going on constantly. And it, mm-hmm. so when, where, how are they finding the, these children? Like what, what is it? Where are they getting them? I mean, I'm I'm trying. Hope I'm asking the right question. And yeah, that yeah, that's a really good question. They they get them from a number of places. So um, if you think of concentric circles, there's different um, kind of places they get them. So the first circle would be bloodline families that are multi generational, and so those are the ones they want the most because there's things that are passed on through the bloodline, um, like epigenetics. The ability to withstand the trauma gets passed on. And um, also there's like um, generational demonic legal grounds. Mm-hmm. So it all goes together. They really want to keep it in the blue eyes. Um, 
however, these people are really incestuous. And so they, they basically go as close as they can in keeping their bloodlines without the defects of um, incest. Right. So, and they, they push the line too much, right? Like they, so, I mean, they can't just get all their kids from there. And so then they'll have another circle outside of that, which is like, maybe um, they'll go and take somebody who's not involved, but like they're an aunt or an uncle or something, or they're, they marry into a family and they can access a child that may have half the bloodline or some family connection, but like, but that they're not like all in on it. Right. right. And then they'll have um, another layer of that where um, they'll have people that they pull out of the general public. Like it might be your, your daughter's friend, like, and her family has no idea and just thinks she's coming for sleepovers. But if they can access that child on a certain regular basis, they can lay the programming in. And then they have kind of the general public where they can take people out of the school system, like through the gifted programs or daycares, or, I mean, like, it's not really that hard for them to access children anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of places they can access children, like especially through the schools and stuff. So, um, but those people would just be kind of out of the general population. Um, so yeah, it goes kind of in circles. And then, yeah, a lot of these like um, families that are generational, they will actually have like a gated community and all be in the same town because they, um, not only do they share their children, but like they all work together to like program the next generation and then also cover each other's butts and hide things. Right. So normally in a town, a cult will make sure that they have members that work, especially in the hospitals, because they need access to the hospitals for um they, to do traumas like they need the drugs the medical background but then also to hide their traumas right they need a doctor that they can take a abused child to that's not going to fill out a social service report right like so they have um people to hide it and they have people that work in the police departments and like any of the kind of agencies that run a town there'll normally be all cult members all in that in a web of that over a town wow so it goes so they've infiltrated every aspect of our society they they've over the years they've got their their religion because that's what it is to them their their the, the satanic agenda they brought it into our the schooling system medical system uh, yeah. every aspect yeah we're seeing that played out right now right like i mean it's... yeah wow yeah. i just i just think of that like like i just think of what we're up against and because i think like we were saying about the technology part but there's a lot of people that don't understand tech anymore or the power of it and then I think that that's what they're using against us. They know that. And then I'm thinking like, we're really at a disadvantage here because people have this weird notion of what Satanism is. And then, then when you tell them that this whole, this whole satanic agenda that's being run by these social engineers, that's where you kind of lose a lot of people because they don't believe in it. And I, and I'm so, I, this, this conversation is so important that I hope people realize that what they're up against and that this is uh, affected every aspect of their life, that this is, a war that a spiritual war yeah it is and infiltration is their one of their number one agendas like since forever right like but especially in the 1800s and stuff like they really started making a very <laughs> strong effort to infiltrate everything including churches uh, um, and theology schools and medical schools and all these places that train people also like they really infiltration is like one of their main tools right like um, and for people that don't believe that, like, I don't care where you live, there's a Freemason hall in your town. Like Absolutely. I've been to towns that have 30 people and there's a Mason hall there. Like they have put a hall in every single town and that's just one group. So people can that go look that. That makes sense. Themselves. I'm thinking about what you just said about satanic and or uh, the, uh, the Masons. Yeah. And uh, every town around me, they all mm -hmm. got lodges. Like it doesn't even yeah. matter if it's a small little country town. It's like, Jesus, there's a lodge here too, but they're yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they they really are, and in every country, like they there's they're they are everywhere. Like it's you know, um, and so they've worked in the background a lot. Um, but if you look at um, you know, Madame Bolasky and Alice Bailey and stuff, like they they really um, they have the concept of externalizing the hierarchy. So the hierarchy is always there. Um, they've always really like well incrementally they've controlled more and more and more things. But what's happening now is they actually want to come out in the open, right? And so. There's all these people that are like, oh, yeah, dark to light, like everything's going to get better now. And, and it's like, OK, but there's also they play both sides and it is the Freemason checkerboard of black and white. So they have a bunch of saviors that are going to come out on the light side and look like they're cleaning up the dark side. And that's part of why they're like 
bringing out this really overt Satanism, like the Grammys and stuff like that. Like, it's just so gross at this point. It like, is. they might as well just kill a baby right on stage. Like, it's it's that bad, right? Like, yep. but they want that because um, then, you know, it's problem, reaction, solution. So they, they make it like they want to really make society so filthy that people are just appalled. And then they're going to come in as like, oh, we're going to come in and make it better and give you this idealized utopian society where everything's cleaned up and pretty looking right and like that's going to be kind of that false dark to light where people kind of think oh wow you know it's all been fixed but it's it's the same people they always play both sides wow so that that's true and it's true i love what you said because i think of the grammys i think of all of these like super bowl halftime shows and that and they're just getting so blatantly blunt like they're just if they Mm -hmm. they're like you said they might as well sacrifice a child they're i mean they're not far from that uh, to the point yeah the satanic <laughs> temple just opened up like they have now um they passed a law where they have zones around abortion clinics where you're not even allowed to go like pray inside your own head or like even just stand there like you're, and so but then the, the satanic temple actually wants to have rituals as they're doing abortions now and it's been approved like it's they're going to just keep pushing it until it's so open right and we are in a spiritual war and like we are being basically given every opportunity to do the right thing. Like, I mean, we can't claim ignorance at this point. Like we're literally like watching children be abused. And if you're going to sit and do nothing, like you are morally accountable for that. Like you can't pretend you didn't know. Um, And so when the wrath does come upon the earth, like it will be just because we, it's not like it's going to be coming out of nowhere. It's like, no, like you were given every incremental chance for how bad it was going to get for you to still be doing nothing. And at the point now where it's like overt child abuse and people still don't want to get involved like that, I don't really know if that doesn't get you on the field. Like I, I don't know what would, you know, I agree. I mean, if you can't, if you can't get on the field when you see that and you just walk away, that speaks volumes about who you are, I think. Because it's right. so it's so blatant what they're doing, and and I I, I just so I want, I keep I'm so interested in how they're doing it because you see society just falling worse and worse every time I think it can't get worse it we go worse and I'm like Jesus <laughs> yeah. like yeah. And, then, and so but I I get what you're saying that they're using they have this knowledge they've perfected it since you know well since the dawn of man but they've really perfected it you know as they as you said they made it scientific they really learned about the brain and, and how to do this perfectly and so now what part is our everyday technology that we're using part of their programming i think of like all the social media i think of the movies i mm-hmm. think they're always thro- we're getting explain a little bit like what like how that's affect how that's getting the, the agenda more forward because they got to be using it like we're, like we're saying they're using it against us and it's everywhere like how yeah, do you get I mean, away from the always, tech? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've always used technology. And it's kind of funny if you look at the people that, um, you know, like the baby boomers post-World War II, when it was like there was one news channel and one newspaper. Yeah. And they just had this like perfect mind control. And everybody was so trusting of authority and like trusting of doctors and trusting of politicians. And, um, you know, everybody just went along to get along. And there was really this like respect for authority and just be- being a rule follower. And so mm-hmm. like, I mean, these Satanists had the, I mean, it was just so easy for them at that point. right? Like, I mean, they, they, but they weren't <laughs> even being challenged in any way. They had it in the bag. Right. Um, and then I think, you know, like if you look at some of the stuff that happened with the sixties, I think a lot of it was planned. Like a lot of it was planned um, to kind of liberalize society and break down social structures. Mm -hmm. But then I think it also got a little bit out of their control because people were doing these drugs that were like really opening their consciousness. And like they were tapping into like these other things that these social engineers actually weren't in control of anymore. And I think that's why they really quashed it like with the Manson family. And like they did, they kind of like, were like, okay, we got to stop this. Right. Like we, and then they actually recorded all that research because Um, A lot of the stuff with the 60s movement was a lot of like CIA actually um, like researching, right, and Mm -hmm. and documenting all of the festivals and like they had underground undercover, you know, um, like prostitution brothels and stuff where they were like recording how people were acting on LSD and like so it really was like just a big research thing for them, Um, you know, and then. I think with Vietnam too, like that was one of the first time that like people were able to get some kind of alternative news um, sources and sort of go against the establishment. Um, 
And then, you know, then we have the satanic panic in the 80s, where actually a lot of stuff actually did come out in the 80s. Like you had the book Michelle Remembers, you had the Geraldo was covering yep. people coming forward. Um, there was uh, Paul Bonacci, there was um, the Franklin cover up, there was stuff released about the finders, like there was actually a lot of stuff that got leaked out in the 80s. Um, and so what they did is because they, we still didn't have the internet, right? Like they were really easy. Um, able to quash a lot of it right, right. like um, even the documentary like the conspiracy of silence and stuff like they just buy that and then don't release it so they were really able to kind of stop things from getting out um, and, and people were killed and a lot of things were covered up and you know they were able to do it and then in the not in the 90s like with the internet like i mean this stuff just really started coming forward right and so now i mean a lot of stuff's been coming forward so all they can really do now is try to like discredit it and stuff or distract from it but i mean a lot of this stuff really did try to come out before so yeah they don't have the control that they did through the media and stuff but really what they can do now is hook you up to the media so that you're actually not even really living in this reality anymore right like people actually um they identify so much with TV and the characters on TV and even with porn stars, like people actually like have this weird relationship with the yep. porn star in their mind. And like, it's really like they've attached to these screen personalities yep. and stuff and they, they feel like they actually have a relationship with them. And so that's kind of a surrogate that's been given to a lot of people. Like a lot of people, um, especially with um, what's happened over the last two years, people are really staying home and just going online and, you know, watching mm -hmm. a lot of taking, taking in a lot of media and stuff. And so, yeah, they have people really hooked up to it again. Right. Like, and so, um, and I think also now people have a hard time telling the difference between reality and, and not reality because a lot of our news just seems like WWF or like, it seems like a weird reality show. It's all scripted and, you know, it's like they're mixing reality and fantasy and then they're putting a lot of disclosure and stuff in, uh, you know, fictional movies and mm -hmm. stuff. So everything's really blurred for people right now as to what's real and what's not. That makes sense because we were talking about that before we actually started doing recording is that I was saying that I'm watching a show called Evil and they kind of talk, they, they kind of come at it from the church angle, obviously, where they're they're battling against um ex they're trying to exercise demons out of people and they're talking about possession and they do have a lot of truth in there if you if you see it but then right when they give you a good kernel of truth they poison it they kind of spin it and they put the whole church aspect on it or they you know they kind of like minimize it and kind of make it like oh well they figured out that it wasn't a possession or something but it, they're still exposing it they're like they're still talking about it but they're tainting the message at the very end and i think that's yeah. what they're doing that's all Netflix is in my opinion. Um, and I, I still feel there's value to having it because I, I, I trust in my own discernment to take, take what I want from it and right. not believe it all. But actually Netflix is almost a perfect inversion of whatever they're trying to get you to believe look exactly opposite to that. Like, and so they, they do all these exposés and, you know, and they give you little good, you know, it's still worth watching to pick those little bits of information you want to go research on your own. But if you just stop and mo a lot of people do, they just watch Netflix and uh, something that I think is really dangerous on Netflix is a lot of the historical shows that they have because people don't actually read real history books or educate themselves on real history. They just watch a Netflix show, which isn't even claiming to be accurate history, that's right? True. Like it's just a theme of a fiction show, but that's a lot of people just don't even question like that is their history lessons. Right. And so there's a lot of that on Netflix. Um, but yeah, Netflix is a mind control device for sure. Exactly how you described it. I think you described it perfectly. Um, and it's actually owned, I believe, by, um, is it the nephew of Edward Bernays who like wrote so, the book yeah. Propaganda? Like Netflix is completely made for mind control, 100%. Well, explain it because you were telling me this off air too, that you you kind of were half asleep and something came up on Netflix, which I haven't even seen yet. And it scared the shit out of me. What is going on with this? Explain yeah. this thing. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like zoned out and all of a sudden this Netflix thing came on and it was sounded like Alexa or one of those other um, AI, whatever, whatever they're, I just call them demons, but I don't know De what people want to call them. I have a but, perfect uh, name, perfect name. Yeah, they are like, um, a it's funny if you ask Alexa if it's a demon, the, it just says no. <laughs> There's no, no like that's it just no. <laughs> um anyways one of those came on and it was um it's yeah it's interactive it's like hi would you like to relax would you do you want to sleep or just go into a light relaxing state like it totally starts mind controlling you right off the bat and I was like what is this on Netflix like it's these interactive mind control 
um, suggestions that kind of would, you know, just come on and sort of put you in a trance. And then I was like, I was curious. I wanted to keep watching and see where it went. But then at the same time, I was like, no, I'm not going to like, like who knows right like it's i don't true. really want to connect my consciousness to this so i just turned it off but that, i know like i'm now i'm gonna be really looking for that now you're gonna have me on netflix going when is this thing gonna pop yeah up? i'll see if i can <laughs> find it and send it to you it's i'm pretty sure if you put in interactive netflix it should, something, something should come up i think something would come up for relaxation wow. meditation or something but it was yeah it was really creepy yeah, I, then when you told me about that, I was like, okay, that now it's just getting really creepy because especially if like you were, we were saying, if you're half asleep or you are asleep because you doze off watching the TV and then this thing comes on, they could be programming anything into you. Yeah, you and a lot of people think that mind control is like, you know, some weird hypnotist being like, you shall go and jump off a bridge or like really crazy stuff like that, right? And Really, a lot of what the mind control is now is social modeling of appropriate social behaviors, right? So that's really what most of the mind control is. Like, um, it's how to act towards other people and how to act to get ahead in the world. And so if you watch almost any show, it's going to be like a really narcissistic personality that is successful, right? Mm -hmm. Like the person who's always conniving or, you know... Um, really self-serving I mean whether it's like a medical show or a home improvement show or you know what I mean like it's always that person who's very egocentric and like self-centered that's getting ahead on the shows and so that's the kind of stuff that they're really programming in is the way to act in the world and the way to interact with other people in the world wow that makes sense and that's that and the is porn's what an doing. extension of that <laughs> the it, porn's it, an extension of that right it's how to interact Oh, definitely. Definitely. And that's why I'm, I'm so worried about what we're up against because they're hitting us, like we were saying, from every angle. Like, I mean, every, you name it, they're involved in it. They're in there and they're, yeah. they're, it's working because I see, and I've been around, like I said, I've been around since the seventies, late seventies, well, early seventies. Wow. I'm older than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've you were seen... in high school in like the eighties, right? Oh Is that... God. Yeah. You're amazing. in the eighties. Okay. I was nineties, love... but. Well, 90s are better than now. I mean, the 80s, I thought, were amazing. They're, you know, and you were right in your assessment what was going on in the 80s, too. And I was listening when you were talking about it, and I'm like, she's right. That that That's what was going on. They were exposing a lot of things, but it was so easy to bury it back then. It wasn't like it is yeah. now. Yeah. And I just see the destruction that they're doing. I see the agenda that they're doing, and I, I and how other people, Jamie, see, don't see it. I don't get it because they're... They're destroying the family. Like I see that de deteriorating drastically. They're destroying our relationships. They're destroying the medical industry. They're destroying the mm -hmm. education industry. They're, they're, there's this path of destruction that I just think people refuse to either look at or believe it's going on. There's some denial going on for sure in people's minds. Yeah, denial and, um, you know, like in biblical terms, it's that um, their Satan has actually blinded their mind, like they mm -hmm. have actual blinding, right? So they're not like, that's why you can see now, people look at the exact same information and use it to justify opposite beliefs. Like it's like, but they're looking at the same thing, right? Because it's not the same brain looking at it. And so like, that is <laughs> this, the more that this stuff comes out, people are either going to see it as proof or they're going to see it as the opposite of proof so they yep. the more the, it's really funny how and people have kind of chosen which way like you can see that humanity has been divided into like almost two groups of people seeing it the opposite way right yep. like um and so it, it's not actually the events it's the perceiver of the events that's interpreting it wow and then if they blur those lines the best they can that makes it even harder because that's what I see they're doing is they're blurring everything. They kind of, and, and then outright inverting too, which is crazy. I just right. see all this inversion going on to what people should think is normal. Like they, I mean, the people, I think deep down, they know that something's wrong, but they're just not, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. I think it's like you said, they just, they're blind. I mean, I don't understand it. There's no other way to put it. <laughs> right and like when the antichrist comes he's going to seem like a savior right so it's like everybody's always thinking oh this like scary guy is gonna come and be the world dictator or whatever and it's like no no shit's gonna look so bad that by the time that he comes it's gonna be like somebody's gonna come clean this stuff up like i said the fake dark to light right yeah. so like you see now how they're really deep patterning society down to like 
where they want it to be so horrible that people are just like, oh, like somebody come and give, give us a better offer, right? And I mean, that's, you know, you see people in the World Economic Forum or whatever, like they're really going to offer this utopian um, technocratic society, right? But it's such a lie because um, that the technology uh, is neutral, right? But it's the people who have it and society isn't morally evolved right like i mean and the pornography is a perfect example of that like we were as as planet earth we were given the internet which is like that changed us so much like that's a quantum leap for humanity having the internet and like the number one thing it's used for is pornography like which is our base like animal nature like that's our lowest uh part of ourself is our base animal nature right and so like that's what what got used for the internet like it's like that's just a perfect example of you know if we're in a zoo and we're being watched and tested and like okay let's give them the internet and like look what we did with it exactly right you have all this information like they're at our fingertips and i always tell people that thousands of years ago people even hundreds of years ago people would die trying to get this information or to learn about it or have to, you didn't have to, you know, go through trials to get just a sliver of the information that we have <laughs> at our fingertips. And what do we, what is humanity wasted on? Like mindless shows right. and porn. That, that's what yeah. a lot of the, the, that's what's going on on the internet or arguing, you know, like trolling and stuff like that, but nothing, not harnessing the power that's really there. Exactly. It's just a, it's a reflection of our more of a, where, where we stand morally. Right. And people familiar, like, yeah. I really like Mark Passio's work um, Me too. about morality and objective morality and how people are de facto Satanists, because I think that um, people like really need to understand that it's all about morality. Like the, the, the dimension that we're in has right and wrong and we are accountable and we ha- we make decisions that are right or wrong like it's not relative it's not something that can be given to us by social engineers like there's certain things that are inherently right and inherently wrong and like we are in the, on a testing ground like this is like a prison where we're basically being tested on our our morals like and yeah. it's like i said in uh the show i did with jonathan like it's like an inverted video game where like you get more tokens for doing the wrong thing in this game and so like the whole game is to like not to to play it inversely from what it looks like you're getting as a reward right yeah. but it's all about morality this this whole dimension it's all about morality Absolutely. And it's true. I love your video game. The way you describe it is that because it's perfect. And I think about if you want to get forward in this game and you want to really get some uh, coins and gather up all of that, they do anything wrong. That's what they're encouraging. Anything mm-hmm. that is like opposite of, of morality, that it's negative. That's what they're encouraging. Like, you know, and I think of like the workforce where people are like, you know, fuck them. You know, I'm going to step over everybody I got to get to to get to the top. And that's not just work. That's life. People are like thinking like that. Mm-hmm. So satanic when I think about that. And it just, it's always bothered me that they're, you know, we're losing, and then we're, we're losing our ability to care. I think mm-hmm. care is dying at a, a rapid rate. People are just so selfish these days. It, it's well, just, that's part of the autistic brain fuck, they want. Yeah. It's like no attachment, no empathy, but really, um, technically intelligent is like that robotic you know they want to actually detach humans from emotions because that's as a human species like that's what makes us unique is that we have emotions and that we'll do crazy things like fall in love or like uh, these things that make no sense and can't really be understood unless you were human right like if people want to like look at you know alien research and stuff like that like they're always trying to study human emotion like that like that's like that's what we're being like uh, in a laboratory being watched like um you know and if you look at um like crime history and stuff of like uh crimes of passion and like all these things yep. would just make no sense to these type of like ai automaton robotic other species whether that's like AI or extremely autistic or like, you know, whatever people want to believe in, um, whatever. But, um, you know, like humans really that our our emotions is what makes us unique. So like they're really trying to destroy that. And like with the pornography, it's like, you know, right. It's just taking it away from the emotion. It's turning it into just a physical act like um, with with jobs. Right. It's like everything's just following the policy instead of like doing what's yep. right to really help people. Like yep. and I I've worked in like a lot of agencies where like literally people are dying because they're following a policy and they're supposed to be like a social service agency. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're literally worshiping a policy and causing harm. Like it's, it's so inverted. It definitely is. And I see like 
I see even like TV and, and the tech that like even in movies and these shows that they're showing people, they're really destroying like relationships. Cause I think of mm-hmm. like, I just think of a lot cause like my wife, I'll have TV in the background and I'm kind of, when I'm doing my stuff, I'm listening. And, and a lot of times I'll turn around because I'm just like, wow, I can't believe that this is an actual show. Like these, these shows that are meaningless, like these dating shows where, you know, they're <laughs> on an Island for, th- you know, 30 days and then, you're, they're gonna, supposedly going to fall in love and they, it's how they're cheapening the relationships that way. And then I think about all the violence and the inversions that they're doing in movies and these shows desensitizing us even to that. It's this real decent, they're just desensitizing us to everything that makes us human, if that makes sense. like Yeah, I exactly. Mean, it's what makes us human. And like I was actually um, sometimes like for therapy, I just kind of watch 80s movies because I'm like, if you look at it, I feel like love, true love died in the 80s because like that was when all the the um like the hair bands were writing these like amazing love ballads awesome. yeah like men like <laughs> men but it was from men right like men were like these hopeless romantics and like you look at all this music they put out like mm-hmm. for like when they fall in love it's so powerful and then you watch all the movies from the 80s that are like just those romance movies or whatever and all the music and you know, like that was kind of like the the pinnacle was to to fall in love and and it was that kind of like cheesy romantic like yep. you know and it was cheesy but like that's what was cool about it right <laughs> and exactly. now it's like everything has to be so hardcore and like it's like they've just like taken away any of that kind of like fun part of you know that like there's an element of innocence and like you know it's they've really really destroyed that into what's what you see now it's like um yeah it's really too bad i think it, it really is and, and we kind of touched on the first interview that we did when we were talking about the porn and like i see now how they're what scares me to death jamie too is how they're starting to normalize like uh like pedophilia and stuff i see the agenda mm-hmm. wide open they're 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 trying to normalize this yeah, hundred percent. And I'm just, and then I think about maybe you can touch on this because we were talking about this too. Is that I when I some of the documentaries I look when they look into these elites, you know, they're they're definitely got this. You look at their artwork and stuff; it's really mm-hmm. creepy shit that has children in it with wearing red shoes and then swimming pools. And then you, I, maybe you can tell people what you told me about the swimming pool and all of that. Like I was just like, this is crazy. But this is what these elite people that are running our world and setting policies and steering society believe in and they're and they're the fact that they're attacking children just uh, really gets me upset that they're trying to normalize yeah. this yeah um and uh, like i don't know what people can believe whatever they want but it's it's people are possessed at the top of like they they are they are taken over by something non-human that actually wants to devour human humanity into itself like however people can look at that in biblical terms they can look at in interdimensional terms they can look at it in quantum per- like i mean but i mean i think it's pretty clear at this point that there's something anti-human working against absolutely humanity and that it's overtaking a certain amount of humans and turning them against other humans and if you research um you know like curtis barker's books are really good and he talks about at the top of these kind of hierarchies of uh, you know, Satanists, um, they're really interdimensionally um, connected to like an alien intelligence that's just working through them. And and it's really, um, once it's been taken over in a person, they no longer identify like as the same. And so in psychology, we just call that othering, right? And so that's always a tactic. Um, you'll see this played out all over is to like, really make people feel like I'm not them. We're not, this, we're not in the same club, you know, whether it's like, racism gender stuff um you know in order Mm -hmm. to go to war like you have to believe those people are different than you or and really dehumanize them and so with satanists they like no longer believe they're human they believe that they are above human and superhuman and the reason they believe that is because they're actually being mind controlled by something not human that they've identified with and believe it's themselves and so um it's like looking at things in spiritual terms. I mean, we can hate all these jerks at the top and we all know who like a lot of them are, but like really understanding that those people are literally taken over by an, an alien intelligence that is anti-human and that they no longer even like believe that they are one of us. And that's why they want to kill us because it doesn't make sense for humans to what other species wants to kill itself. Right. Like that's true. obviously it's a non-human entity working through humans to turn it against itself and then use it to kill itself. Wow. And you're going to, I think you're going to have a lot of people that that that's going to that's going to probably shock a lot of people what you just said because I've I've talked to people about this 
and that you know I I I'm like with you. I think that they, like I think it ends. People think it ends at the elite. Like you know, there's these people that are at the top of the pyramid, and they are satanic and they're running the show. But I always say they're answering to somebody too. It goes higher than these people, and I'm glad you brought that up. But you lose a lot of people at that point. Like they're like, I don't believe in interdimensional beings. I don't believe in this. But I, I believe what you're saying that there's it's too perfect the plan mm -hmm. what they're doing. It's mm -hmm. too, yeah, it's working yeah, too well. Yeah, even if you look at World War Two, like the, that those Nazis weren't that smart. I mean, right. they there was something helping. Like there's no. <laughs> That's not human intelligence. You know what I mean? Like they and and just the rapid rate that they were able to like perfectly use, um, you know, propaganda and mind control and harness the masses mm -hmm. and all this esoteric stuff. Like that was such a quantum leap in power and control and abuse that I mean that that wasn't just a couple of weirdos that thought that up. Like that was definitely uh, something else working through those particular people to try and come on the earth. Yeah, absolutely. And then they and that same fourth is, force is trying to come back again through other people and doing a good job. Because and then it was really interesting too because we're talking about World War II. I remember seeing a show where they were explaining, like how deep this mind con mind control goes and how we don't even realize it's being used against us. Because even when Hitler and other politicians were doing their speeches, everything had a purpose. There was a reason that it was done at night with the big torches. There was a every hand gesture that he did was mm -hmm. for a reason. His tone, everything, mm -hmm. and I see that's what they're doing against us now. When I see these politicians on these podiums. We're not, I keep saying to people, we're just a nudge away from what we saw happen in World War II. And then people think you're crazy when you say that. Not here, never again. And I'm like, we're there. We're there. Yeah, I've always felt that way because, um, like, I'm just over 40. And when I, when I was born, it had only been 40 years since all that stuff happened, right? right. So that's yep. not a long time. And, like, even as a little girl, I was reading Anne Frank. And, like, I just, like, I couldn't believe this stuff happened just before I was born, like, within a generation. Like, I, I was like, wow, that's, like, I, I was weird. Like, I used to study Hitler and stuff when I was, like, really young because I just thought it was the weirdest thing that it that is. happened, you know? And, and it's so interesting now that people think that like that could never happen and that we just took care of those guys and it's like no those people had kids and like some of them are still alive like this was not that long ago like yep. it, it's really um the, and humans there's always that potential for that to happen in the human psyche like it's not like we just took care of a couple bad apples and that'll never happen again it's like no that can always happen again and exactly it is happening again and it's really crazy that people um don't think that it could happen again and um like with the othering and stuff it's um you know that's where a lot of cannibalism and stuff comes from because you wouldn't eat your own right like you have to be above something to um want to devour it and eat it right? right so like that's why a lot of the satanists and stuff are into cannibalism because that's another way for them to be like above what they're eating because we think of everything in a, a chain right like a food chain or the whatever they call it it's like the food chain <laughs> but um a hierarchy right there's mm -hmm. a hierarchy of devourment right um and so this non-human um stuff coming through people like you can i mean if people don't believe in that stuff but like why why would it even be against uh, other humans and children like that's the most anti-human thing that goes against even biology is to attack children of your own species like i mean if that that should be pretty good evidence i think that it's I, not I would agree i i totally agree then what you were saying like the the cannibalism i think of you know, like when you see all these celebrities and that with the spirit cooking that they're involved in and then eating like these cakes that are that look human and they're t and I and I and people are like, that's weird. And I'm like, but that 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 they're showing you what mm -hmm. like, but, but they're doing it in a, like like I don't know how to explain it properly. So forgive me, guys. But they're you know, when you see these celebrities eating cakes that look like human and then. It's a ritual that they're showing Yeah, it's you. a ritual to devour yourself. So when people are initiated into another level of the cult, that's when they'll get a cake like that. And they actually eat themselves as a cake because they're devouring their old self and like merging it into their new self that they're becoming after eating that cake. Wow. Like that's what that ritual is for. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, I, I mean, it makes sense though. And then I, and then I even think about... Like the uh, people should know about the Bohemian Grove and stuff like that. And when they do their cremation of care, once again, I, like I was saying, we were saying earlier, we're losing that. Uh, they're, they're killing care is what they're doing. And they, it's really right. scary. And I think it's important that we should say too, Jamie, that people have to start realizing that they're playing these, the satanic cult that is running this world, these social engineers, they're playing both sides. 
And mm-hmm. I think people have a lot of trouble hearing that because everybody wants their side to be right and their the side of good. And like, and I'm thinking, you don't realize the enemy you're up against. They've infiltrated both sides. They're they're playing right. us. And we're like, if you think about it, we are like pawns on a chessboard. So, and we're being played by higher beings, right? So, there is like. <laughs> interdimensionals are more intelligent than humans. Just like we as humans, like I can train a dog, right? Because yeah. I have a higher level of it. Like I know how a dog's brain works and I know if I do certain things, I can get it act a certain way. Well, that's how we are to demons, right? Like we're, they are smarter than us. And so they know how to manipulate us, right? And so, but we have free will. So there's different offers. It's like almost like a binary matrix where you're being offered like moral or immoral, moral or immoral. And it's like binary. So whatever, you always have free will in every decision, even if it feels like you don't, there's like a lesser evil or whatever, but you're always making a a free will choice. Um, And I mean, that can be under heavy duress, which, you know, it's it's not what you would choose um, if you could choose what you wanted. But Mm -hmm. like, there is always a, a split second of, binary decision making in each thing so basically it's like we're we're proxies for an interdimensional war and then we just decide which like who's who are like what side we're willing to actually um be manipulated by because you can be manipulated in a good way or a bad way like if you internalize morals then you're making decisions based on something bigger than yourself and so you're choosing to submit to that higher ideal or principle and so you are manipulated by that right like in a in a good way i don't know if manipulation is really the right word but um so we have free will to like who's our master right like who are you going to be a pawn for um and so and and they are smarter than us like that's what people really are really arrogant like they're like oh i don't you know like i don't believe in that stuff or i don't know about it or you know and it's like that that's fine because we're basically um the only way that this interdimensional intelligence can affect this dimension is through humans right, right. and even like um if you want to think of it in biblical terms like everything happens through humans like we are the medium between the dimensions we're multi-dimensional beings like we have a soul and a spirit that's in another dimension our thoughts are in another dimension our emotions are kind of in both dimensions because they're connected to our thoughts but then they come in our physical body into this dimension which is like that's why interdimensionals are so interested in us too because they're that's really foreign to them and so a lot of like possession and stuff is because they want to experience a physical body um, and that's also can be really tied to the pornography and why the pornography is so perverted as well is because it, it actually is a different entity that's feeding through that pornography, but using humans as the conduit to create it so that it can like observe it and then feed off of it. So, I mean, this wow, is just kind sense. of all stuff to sort of keep in mind, right? Like, It uh, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. And now that, that kind of leads me to where I wanted to ask you the, I was trying to f- find a fit a way to fit this question in. Uh, along the conversation this is perfect because i want to ask you why the satanic uh cult running this world these uh why are they so interested in children and i'm assuming it's because of the purity of their energy am i right yeah there's um so that yeah it's the purity of their energy they're closer to god they haven't been contaminated yet they're they're innocent they're pure um they, they basically are harvesting children but they're also programmable right like it's just like Um, you know, you think of somebody who has a farm, they're like, okay, I've got like a fresh batch of chickens and like, I'm going to, you know what I mean? And and I mean, that's really how they see humans is just like a, a, a freshly made programmable little cell that they can basically make into whatever they want. Right. And because humans are programmable, um, they basically, um, everything that they want they force it right and i don't i don't like using the word creative like sometimes i say oh they create what they want so like when you see a celebrity or um a politician or whatever it's like they've been created to be that they weren't like found right so these shows like star search and stuff that's kind of not true like they make they make what they want they program what they want um and so they do that with humans right they they get a human and they program it to be what they want that makes a lot of sense too, and and then the whole and I like the way that you were saying that we all have free will. I think that's important to really keep in mind that this free will that we have is so important, and it should be our morality compass in a lot of ways. This free will that we have, because I I'm I'm sure the people that are running this world they're saying, listen, we're giving them a choice. We're not we're not technically forcing them. We're giving them this choice, and that's why I'm glad that you're saying that this is a battle for morality. Like this is a, a spiritual battle 
in a morality battle, and that's probably how they're justifying everything that they're doing. Well, we give these human, we because I know they look at us like animals, like, yeah. like, and they're like, well, we give these animals, you know, the knowledge is out there; they can find it if they really want to. They have free will, but they choose their enslavement. They're choosing this, so they get yeah. what they deserve, and they. That's why I don't think they even feel bad. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't really respect us, and like on one level, can we really blame them? Like for like, look at the way we act. Like, are we even worthy of respect? And I mean, of course, there's a scale. Some people more than others, but as a whole, like humanity really is like, yeah, not the most respectable species, right? Like you can see why they don't really feel bad giving us like what they give us yeah i agree and i and that's what i try to tell people i'm like look at where we're at and then uh, like look where we're at as a species i think a lot of people look at things individually like oh well i know good people and I, I'm, we're not that's not what we're saying we're looking at it in the aggregate like as, mm -hmm. a, as this is the karmic debt that we're paying for all of our actions it's not just in an individual it's all the individual bad things that are adding up to where we're at and that yeah. i think it's so important that we talk about the immorality part of it because that is obviously what we're lacking uh, i mean they're, right they're... and that's why they want children because they can program in um like wrong morality into children right like and they're doing that now through all of the tv shows and like they're so um this kind of this is a really important um thing about satanic ritual abuse is that it's it's a satanic attempt to interfere with free will because free will and identity um are really closely connected so like you don't know what your will is if you don't know who you are. And so if you have a fragmented mind and you don't have all the information, you don't really know what your will is because you don't have access to all of who you are. Right. Mm -hmm. And so your self and your identity and your will, it's like the think, feel, act, it goes together. Right. And so children are forming an identity, like by the age of eight is when they kind of become one person. Right. And yep. so if the satanic ritual abuse, they do it to children while the brain is forming, like they do it even in the womb, right? Like they'll start, splitting the the embryo or the the fetus in the womb um so that it's even born split uh it's consciousness wow. from itself right so because if they can do it before the brain's forming they're basically this is how they create like another generation of slaves because they um interfere with the ability of the person to form a stable sense of self so they they don't actually they're actually able to exercise their free will and that's the only time that free will can really be interfered with in this dimension which is why the satanists are doing it like they're basically catching souls as they're coming into this dimension and programming them before they can develop a sense of self so that they can be used for an agenda because they're they're fractured from themselves so it's really an abomination to god's plan um, yes. for free will and it's the lowest of the low but like that's basically where they're putting most of their energy because it's the most effective that is so dark what you just said yeah and wow. and there is there is permission and like um like i think the word authority gets really twisted and i actually agree with a lot of what mark passio says about authority but like when i think of authority i think of responsibility right and so like there are certain responsibilities given to people and being responsible for your children is one of those things like you're responsible to protect your children to a right. certain age because they're they are developing into a self they don't have all capacity yet like children are born like half baked right like they gotta be grown it's into it yeah. right they're not then they're not born ready like they they have to be kind of like nurtured outside of the womb and so there is spiritual authority given over children and the way that um satanic ritual abuse works is that if satan keeps getting the kids right so basically he gets the kid and then um programs that kid the kid grows into an adult but because there's that child part stuck in time that's fractured from the self their, that parent will do the same trauma to their kid, so it keeps going in a chain, mm -hmm. um, and it's bypassing free will because the parent that's dissociative from their own abuse is giving permission for their child to be abused and actually doing it to their own child, and that's how the chain goes because everybody's broken off from their will before it's developed in a chain, and that's why it stays in the in the family line. Well, that makes so the it, the, the fragmenting of the of the mind is key to this. To, to yeah and it's legal like it's legal because of the parents giving permission to the children and so now we see on this 
scale of what's happening with the, like they want you to hand your children over for a, a job or they want you to give your children over for a tranny story time to the school system or give your children over. Like it's really symbolic, the giving over of the children, like because parents do have the uh, like authority and responsibility to protect their children. Um, like I, the age of eight is kind of like that where that legal is. Yeah. Right. But um, so if you see now um, really what's being played out with a lot of what's going on, what they're trying to get is you to give your children over with give permission because then they can program that next generation legally. It makes total sense, too. And you're so right, Jamie, when you say that people are giving over their children. I've talked about this, too, because and it's getting younger and younger. Like, yeah. I, you know, like now it's like, you know, when I was growing up, you kind of like had like junior kindergarten and then I, well, yeah, cause you're Canadian too. So you know what I'm talking about. You had kindergarten, like junior kindergarten, junior kindergarten, and then you went grade one, two, three, four, up and up in the school system. And now you see parents giving over their children, like even younger, they're, they're, they're pre preschool, <laughs> preschool, like they're, and they're handing them over. They're just handing, I would never, I could well, even never putting do your this. Kid, even putting your kid in front of the TV, you're handing them over. That, I, I harp on that with technology because right. I have friends around me that their kids are totally addicted to tech. I mean, God forbid their phone or tablet loses power. And they're, it's re it's wiring their brain as their brain is forming. So again, it's going to be that autistic robot brain that's being um, programmed. So it's really easy for them to do with kids with the technology because their brain's forming. But like with adults, what happens is the way that they've set up technology now is you're actually being like bio digitally replicated. So there's like a virtual replica of you in the computer, which is like your likes, your clicks, um, your yeah. facial recognition, your um, the time of day you want, like any bio, any biometric or even like habitual data that they can collect on you all gets kind of recorded into this like virtual version of you. And once they have that, they can start, programming you so it's like a hypnotic technique where it's pace pace lead right so they're going to like connect with you and start resonating with you and then once they've kind of entrained you then they can start programming and that's really how a lot of technology works that's why like the more you go on Facebook, the more you're getting certain ads for certain things at certain times. I was going to ask you that, yeah. Right? It's, it's because there's a replica of you online Wow. that the AI recognizes as you. Like it knows who you are. And so it knows your likes, your dislikes, every time. So it's really, you have to be careful then any fingerprint that you're putting out on in technology because it's all being, and I know that people will say, yeah, we know we're being watched, but I'm not talking about satellites and that. I'm talking about, like you're saying, this digital finger, fingerprint that you're leaving, it is, it, it's all by design. They're, they're getting to know you at the most intimate yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. And think about like all the, the porn, right? That people are. And that's oh all God, being recorded yeah. into um, uh, data for relating porn preferences to other things. Because really, like I said, we're say we're at a zoo, like, and the demons are observing us. Like, they want to understand how to use sexuality and emotion to manipulate humans because that's how we're most programmable, right? Like, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. So they want that data. They want the pornographic data and they want the emotional data. That makes a lot of sense. And so, there is, so what is there like? We're because we're talking about these inner, inner, like de demonic inner, like demons, or if you want to call it AI. We're the, we're kind of covering a few things. They're because they don't have emotion. Is that what they're trying to get? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, are they trying to figure out how to make emotion so they can yeah. have it? Yeah. Um. And so, uh, there's a lot of. Um, wow. research with psychotropic drugs as well, right? Like interfering with dopamine and serotonin. Mm -hmm. Like, So yeah, they really want to be able to just break emotion down to just its pure chemical components. And if you look at a lot of MK Ultra research, a lot of it really was on like the endocrine system and how drugs affect the endocrine system and like how to make people even fall in love by like making them stare into each other's eyes and injecting chemicals into them and like just any way that they could control human emotion because... Um, you know, you'll see this even with psychopaths and sociopaths, like they're just always trying to take a read on the emotion because they aren't feeling it themselves. Right. So it's, they're just trying to like machine learn how to act like it so they can blend in. Right. So, um, 
yeah, if you look at interdimensionals and, and AI, and I actually think they're actually really the same thing. Right. Um, I don't think it's artificial at all. Um, I think it just appears that way. But um, yeah, they they definitely are studying the motion. And then again, because they're not in this dimension, like they're jealous of like human emotion, right? Because it's like they they want to possess bodies so they can experience, um, you know, the full gamut of being human. They don't get to have that. Very interesting. So Disturbing. sex is a big one, right? Like <laughs> yeah. they want to possess somebody and have sex or like even just doing drugs through a person who's possessed, right? Because they want to, they don't care. Like that body, they'll just use it up and throw it away, right? But they want to use that body to experience things through the body. That makes a lot. And what you're saying about how it's all a chemical, that that's that really resonated with me just now. That you're saying like they're breaking it, they're breaking down humans emotion and what we in all of our all of our senses basically like all of our emotions is a chemical reaction in the brain and if they can they can duplicate that it they, that's very it makes a lot of sense and it's very powerful like i mean they're breaking they're breaking it down to the chemical essence and trying to figure out what lo- chemical is love what every one of these chemical like it's all a reaction in our, in our yeah mind. and frequency too right so there's a lot of like people can go and research a lot of um you know, psychotronic weapons and stuff is really, um, you know, for crowd control or whatever, they can just put a certain frequency out and people will be like totally docile and, you know, they don't care anymore. And you could be at a protest and be totally riled up. And then all of a sudden you just don't care. You're like, whatever, man, like it's all good. It's all good. Right. Like they can do that all with a frequency really easily. Actually. Um, that technology is actually really old. Um, and like the police and military have that kind of stuff, you know, they have, um, you know, frequency taser things that can put towards you and you'll just feel it near solar plexus and be really nauseous. And like, you're not going to go fight when you are trying not to throw up, you know? Like, yeah. And I think about all, like you think of all the 5g towers going up and that I've even had done, done shows on this too, where the guest I had was explaining like what this Bluetooth and all of these frequencies, how they're having a negative effect. And I just think like, imagine if they re- like what they could do. I think they have a dialed down very low right now, but if they start cranking all of this up, we're going to be just mind. Like we're already mindless. I think most people, but now they're really going to be mindless. Like, wow. Like, Oh, I think she kind of froze up. That's okay. I will not to worry guys. We are just here. I'm going to call her right back. Uh, talking to my guest, Jamie J. We are diving into some really important stuff here. We are talking about, uh, you know, Satanism. We're talking about satanic ritual abuse. We're diving into AI. A lot of great stuff here, guys. Uh, let me just go ahead and get her back on here. This happened last time, as you guys know, in part one. No big deal, because it gives me a chance to do a little recap here. And uh, talk to you guys and let, just let, you know, people know what's going on. And I really hope you guys are enjoying this and uh, learning about this because it's so dark. It really is. And uh, I'm hoping that I can get her back on here. All right. One sec. I will try back in one second here. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for being here and for listening to this. I think this is so important. This is such an important discussion to have i think the one that we had in part one uh talking about the dark side of the porn ag- like you know just the basically the porn agenda and how they're using all of this against us and i'm really thankful that jamie came on here to do part two because we're you know it's a darker subject like i said i was really excited to do this but it was a two-edged sword because it's i'm really excited to get this information out to you guys and to the people out there that want to take this in and learn about it, but it's such a dark subject too, because you know, it really is a spiritual war that we're on here. And I just hope people start to realize that, that it's, you know, and they're playing both sides against each other. It's, it's just really obvious to me. And it's kind of crazy that it's not obvious to other people, but we're going to get Jamie back on here. We're ringing now. Hey, we got you back. We actually went quite a while before you, you kind of crashed. So yeah, we got no, you back. No um, big deal. There we go. We got you back. I was just like, I, I don't. I was just like, no panic, guys. This happened the last time. So no. Uh, thank you for being here, Jamie. I just gave a little recap of what we were talking about, and I was letting people know that you know it's this is needs to be talked about. It, it's so important, and I want people to realize, and I'm sure as as much as you do, of, of what we're up against, and. People always tell me, I was saying earlier, people always say to me, well, I don't believe in Satanism at all. And I think it's all just crap that they're, that, you know, and, and I'm like, this is what they believe. 
doesn't matter that you don't believe it. Like, I mean, that's... Yeah, they'd prefer if you didn't actually... That's, they would. They do. They prefer it. And so, yeah, What, what before we got disconnected there, uh, what were you... Uh, is there things, anything else that you want to tell people, like, they, like... Yeah. On this topic? It's, <laughs> so basically... The, we got to okay, get... Yeah, get it out there. This is how I tried to explain it on the show with Jonathan, is that we are in a video game matrix video game holographic and god is the programmer he wrote the code he makes the rules it's his game right so um we're in that game there's players playing the game from the outside um basically um satan whatever people want to believe that is it's a force that's playing against the creator and basically everything that satan does is a counterfeit of what god does so god made this video game and so what satan wants to do is make his own game within a game just like that movie inception Mm -hmm. so basically he wants to put a synthetic matrix over top of the matrix that was created by god so um that's going to be through technology so you can look up what smart dust is and nanotech and all of the things that they want to get inside of our body and in the chemtrails is all basically to put this type of um, receiver dust out to kind of hold this synthetic dimension. It's kind of like the thing that's going to hold it all together, right? Like this spider web that's going on to earth kind of needs something to hold on to. Okay. And so this kind of nano dust that they can get in through vaccines or chemtrails, or, I mean, there's a million different ways they can get it inside of everything because they want it everywhere. Right. So that this dimension kind of becomes um, a sentient receiver um, and then wow. once yeah. the the groundwork's laid, they can turn on the dimension through 5G and then um, that dimension will be like a virtual reality dimension. And for people that think this sounds crazy, like just go and look at augmented reality or these different types of things, even on people's iPhones now. Like, so there, it's like there's going to be kind of a phase where it's like the two dimensions are existing at the same time. But basically what they want to do is to entrain your brain waves by making a receiver. And then once they turn on this synthetic dimension, it's going to be through the subconscious mind first before it reaches the conscious mind. So you're not actually going to be able to resist it because it's going to seem like it's coming up like from you and then you're perceiving it. So basically if we get hooked to this false matrix, um, you know, they bas- basically Satan would l- own this dimension and mm-hmm. control it because it's his dimension within a dimension. So if we allow our consciousness to be hooked up to that, it's almost like we're going to be stuck in some weird virtual reality video game that we're not really going to know how to get out of because it's actually coming through us. Um, and wow. so yeah. that's why in the Bible it says, once you take the mark of the beast, like you won't be able to resist anymore because you're, it, it's going to seem like it's coming through you. Um, and so that's kind of like what we're up against. Right. So, and, so when they um, say the mark of the beast, is that, do you, you take that as technology? I mean, I don't know. People can, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people that speculates because I think that things will all be revealed to us in time. And I don't think there's actually even any point in speculating things. Like when you look back at the Bible and it says that everybody will be given the chance to choose, like those people couldn't imagine that we would have the internet where anybody could actually be. So like the stuff that's happening in the future, I don't even know if we have the concepts yet for what's going to be unfolding. And so I don't actually even try to speculate. I just think it'll be revealed when it's revealed. But um, basically, you know, so if you think about it, this could be a breakaway. If, if, if this synthetic dimension gets a whole bunch of consciousnesses trapped into it, and then it can kind of just break away and like, just kind of exist in space or time. Um, you know, and even in the Bible, it says that people will wish for death, but they can't die. So like, imagine if you got pulled into this fake virtual AI that just goes in a time loop on forever and you're stuck in it and you can't get out. That is terrifying. (laughs) <laughs> what you just said, like, oh my God, now you're going to be thinking about that. So because... what is hell? Maybe hell's like what these transhumanists are going to create hell and then be stuck in it. Yeah, my tech guy, I, I wish you could see my hair on my arms. It's standing up because my tech guy was just uh, talking about this because he's also big into the virtual reality and he's already on, he's already at to the point now where he thinks we're what you're describing is what we're in. He's mm-hmm. almost at that point. He's like, we're there. Like, how do we not know we're not in this loop? Well, we might not be able to, like, that's the thing is they might just turn it up so little at a time that we, when will we really know when the, when the fake and the real is kind of merged into one. And that's why this stuff like the metaverse and stuff is really freaky because it's like, 
when are we going to be able to tell when we're in it or not? Like, where's that line when they're going to slowly merge it together? Yeah, and that's, that's what they want to do, and that's it, yeah, it's it's blurring the it's blurring reality, and it, it, that's I, yeah. I, I'm serious. That is really freaking me out. What you're just saying is he he was talking about this. And I was just like, and then he, he's like, I said, he's at the point now where he thinks we're there. He's like, this is, and if we're not there, we're really close. He's like, this is, and he was talking about exactly what you're talking about, that this is what hell would be is kind of us stuck in this prison where it just goes on and on and on. And, and, and you're saying they want to do this to live through, like live or live. Well, then it's like, they're going to rule it. So it's like, they're ruling hell. Like they create this dimension and then they're in, in complete control of it because they can program their own code into it. Like they can program reality. Right. And that's what the transhumanists really want to do. They want to be God. That, that's, yeah. They want to be God on earth. Right. And I, and I've right. heard a lot of they're people. They're not. <laughs> they're not. Yeah, exactly. They're not. So I tell people don't lose hope because um, they're actually not going to succeed. And God is in control. And like, they're going to try and God's going to let them go so far, but they're not going to get away with it. I hope not. Wow. But I mean, I just wonder about humanity though. Like, cause I, I tell you, Jamie, when I see, and I'm sure I know that you're, you're very observant too, obviously. Like, I mean, you, you, you have to see what's going on in this world and it's just getting worse and worse. I mean, I, I just wonder like what is going to wake people up. I don't, I don't know. I thought that what happened two years ago you know, and I think or two and a half years ago, you know, people know what I'm talking about. If I say it on YouTube here, they're going to flag it. So mm -hmm. I think people know what I'm talking about that's happening around the world. I mean, like, I thought that would have been enough to shake people out of it. But people have just gone right back into this fucking slumber around me. It's Yeah. And sometimes I feel like I've always kind of been like, oh, we're fighting. We're fighting. Like, I've always felt like a fighter, right? Like, that's my right. role as a chess piece on this board. Like, I'm here to fight. And like, but then sometimes I look at, um, you know, okay, if we stop the consequence and these people are going to stay where they're at morally because we like basically blocked the consequence of this immorality mm -hmm. for them, then like that's going to carry on to the future. And so it's like, where is that line where, you know, some consequence is actually going to expand the whole, like, I mean, preventing the consequence is might just keep all humanity at a flat line. And like, I kind of see that played out right now where it's like, you know, are we going to go back to sleep and, you know, stay in this state of ignorance, which is only going to bring more consequence in the future? Or are we going to proactively take what's been given to us and revealed and work with it and then say, okay, we're going to like proactively try and do what's right before we're like getting the consequence from it. So right. I feel like that's what we're being offered right now. So all this bad stuff being exposed can be really stressful, but at the same time, we're really being given an opportunity, um, to basically um, have a little snapshot of what's coming and and basically uh, take action now. That, that that's a that's a great way to look at it too. I mean, maybe we have to suffer these consequences to to kind of kick ourselves in the ass to get us out of where we're at. Because well, and it's unfortunate that it's that it's um it's coming to the that. <laughs> the whole right because there's a lot of good pe moral people who don't want need uh you know to experience what exactly. happened in World War do but i mean those people might actually be sacrificed for the people that need the trauma to uh realize that it's wrong and so like i feel like that's kind of what happened in world war ii and i feel like there was a whole bunch of people who <laughs> died and really mm -hmm. bad stuff happened um and then but then humanity actually did act a little bit better after that right like they made you know certain laws and they were like we're not going to do this again kind of thing right um and now it's kind of circled back around to that again where it's like okay we've so soon forgot now we're going to get this lesson again in like probably a more harsh form that that's a great way to look at it. that's a great way to look at it. i because I, I tell people that we're going to keep getting we're going to keep getting this lesson until we like uh yeah until we get it till we get it like until we learn about morality and and learn mm -hmm. what it really is and why we're people are really here. We're going to keep getting this lesson. I mean, the, 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 the creator of the university, that can be whatever you want to call it. I don't care. I'm not going to argue with you. The creator, that's what I call him. And, uh, he's going to make us keep doing this lesson over and over and over again until we get it. And I, it, it, I think it's a, just an issue of learning what morality is and people have to learn that lesson and even painfully, which we are yeah. <laughs> like, yeah and you know what at the end of the day though it's all just a game so don't freak out it's a great way to look at it. i mean i i okay i'm, I'm with you i mean <laughs> this is so fascinating to me um 
to kind of bring it around, I'm just trying to try, I want to wrap it up. I don't want to keep you too, too much longer. I'm so thankful that you came to do part two, Jamie. I really am. Uh, this is so important. Um, is there any, I want to talk a little bit about solutions. How do people start breaking out of this? Because I think people are in this system. They don't know how to break out of it. I mean, I always like to, I want to end on a positive note because we've kind of went down a dark uh, topic here. And uh, how do people fight back? How do they get out of the system? Like, what would you recommend? Uh, I mean, I think, I, I think just, um, stop, stop lying to yourself. Like, I mean, look at, you know, look at the Grammys, look at these things. Like, are you going to lie to yourself and say, Oh, it's just for show or it's just that it's like, you know, start being honest with what you're looking at in front of your own face, because that's really what breaks down a lot of programming is, you know, stop lying to yourself and get out of denial, like really look at reality of what it is, you know, like really look, everything's, nothing's really hidden anymore. It's all there. If you stop lying to yourself, you'll see it. Absolutely. I always tell people that too, that you have to get brutally honest with yourself and start working on yourself and real and that that's key I, I i'll say that at every show if i have to because it's that important that people i yeah. just they, they don't even know who they are anymore they're people are so i in you know busy in denial pick your poison but they're they're in this state and and they don't even know who they truly are and how can you fight against what's going on what we're talking about in this world if they're controlling you and you don't know who you are then you don't like you said, you, you summed it up great. If you don't have that knowledge of self, you don't even know what your, you don't even know what your limits are. You don't know what you're up against. You don't, you know, you don't even have a, really a side to stand on. Yeah. And I mean, don't like, don't overwhelm yourself. Start small because the way that the brain works is like a pin in a fire hydrant, right? So like when you start letting little drops of water out, the flow just starts increasing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's for people deprogramming from SRA and like hardcore mind control, but like also just our mind control, like, just stop lying to yourself about little things. And then your subconscious mind is like, starts to trust your own perception more because you're not lying to yourself over like just the littlest things. And then that'll just increase more and more and more until you stop lying to yourself about big things. Makes sense. That's great advice. I mean, I, and they call it shadow work. Hey, I'll call it that. Whatever you guys, any term people want to use, if it's going to get them to do the work on themselves, I'm with you. I'll use that term shadow work. I use it myself. So I think that's so key. Is there, I know you love reading. Is there any books that you can recommend that people <laughs> if they want to look more into the sat satanic ritual abuse or any of the topics that we're covering, what can you recommend for them? <sighs> I know you got some. Yeah. I just like, I I'm, I'm actually um, very particular about books that I recommend because I think some books can actually be too traumatic for people. So I actually don't blanket recommend every, everything for everyone. I'm very actually quite specific. I, every time people ask me for books, I say like, who are you asking for? Because I want to kind of gauge where they're at. So, um, because a lot of the books, um, are probably not something that everybody should read because if you're going to get so traumatized from reading it, that you're like sitting at home in a catatonic state, right. drooling out of your mouth, you're, you're not really going to help. So, um, yeah, I think that um, looking at Kurt Barker's books are really amazing, but again, like not for the faint of heart. Um, I think that for um, programming and stuff, Svali is really good. She's got a lot of stuff online um, with a lot of the psychology that goes into programming. Um, she's been around for a while and has really good work. Um, and then, you know, just go on Amazon and there's actually so many survivors right now that are coming forward and writing books. Um, you know, so I always say everything's within and without. So like we're having an outer apocalypse, but there's also like an inner apocalypse going on right now where like a lot of people are actually getting back their repressed memories and breaking through programming. And like, um, there's kind of this like internal veil being lifted of things that have been blocked from themselves. So like there's this whole wave of people that are writing books right now. So even if you just go on Amazon and look up the, um, the topic there's there's so much on there now that was not there even five years ago wow so there it's that it's that big of a of this 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 satanic programming is is so big that i'm it just is that you've kind of you're kind of flooring me in a way i knew it was bad but you're saying it's it's there's a lot of victims out there of this yeah, and it. I mean, I think looking at Russ Dizdar's work is really good too. Like he has web pages where you can actually he there's a whole bunch of courses that he put out for free, and he's passed away now. But like his book and work is still there, and like it's really relevant to right now um, with this kind of mass programming that's gone on. 
Wow. So that's crazy. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking because it's really like, I think people just, I, yeah, they think of this Hollywood version. I'll keep saying that because I, and I only say that because I've talked to people and that's right where they go. And so I know the programming is working very well. When you bring up these topics that we're covering, people automatically think of the Hollywood variant of it. And I, and by design, I know they do that. And like you were saying, that's very low level, but that's mm -hmm. where people are at. And I just think like, when you think of all of the, all of these politicians and people that are in high places running the world and they all have this this ritual abuse that they don't even, they're not even aware of yeah and that the fact that they can you know through a trigger can be their program to do whatever these handlers you know want them to do that that really disturbs me Jamie like I'm serious like who knows what is coming down the road I mean yeah I... God, this was a dark topic. Hey, but don't lose faith because you know what? Love is stronger than all I... of it. All of their programming, it's all coming from a place of cowardice and weakness and force. And that's actually the most ineffective way to accomplish anything. So um, right now there's like, God's actually exposed so much that was not exposed. Even like I said, five years ago, like it's a huge quantum leap and actually what's being exposed. So um, it's really amazing time. Actually, it's just kind of like, we're going to have to like see the ugly before we can clean it up and know how to even know how to clean it up. But we're, it's definitely being like the curtains being pulled back from it right now. So the cockroaches are like scurrying for sure. That's very true. That, that That's a great way to end it, Jamie. That is true. Love conquers all. I truly believe that. I bet. And, and I would say you have to learn to love yourself. Definitely first. I think that's just, I think that's key. And I, and I'll, and I'll keep hammering at you guys. Every interview, every video I do, I, I talk about doing the work on yourself because that's a game changer. And I think Jamie's, that's what you're saying too. You have to get to know yourself and love yourself. And that's where it starts. It starts knowing yourself. Yeah. And it's, it's like really loving yourself is like setting boundaries, being honest, having discipline, maybe even like being a bit harsh on yourself, tough love on yourself. Like, Absolutely. you know, there's this kind of really narcissistic self-love that's promoted. That's actually really satanic. It's like, just indulge yourself and like, just worship yourself. And, you know, that's not self-love. Self-love is actually like, what if you, if you loved your child, you wouldn't just give it whatever it wants, whenever it's time, tell them it's awesome, no matter what. And people do that to themselves and think it's self-love. And I like what you're talking about, about self-love is really like doing the work and doing the shadow work and, you know, being, uh, disciplining yourself absolutely well thank you so much jamie is there anything else that you think is important I <laughs> no, give let's it... shut it down it's been two hours i we'll know going. <laughs> i think i think you've covered so but you're welcome back you know in the future you know that you've always you're always welcome here on the show because uh cool. i mean you're the information you're bringing here is so important and uh i hope i didn't lose you on the end okay you came back thank god i thought we were going to get disconnected right at the end so uh, thank you so much, Jamie. This was amazing. I mean, it was a, it's a dark topic, but I think it has to be talked about more. So I'd love to have you back on someday to to really dive even deeper into it. Anytime, just reach out. You're always welcome here, Mike. I, I, I really mean that. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Do you want to stay in the background or do, and I can sure. say bye to you? Like, yeah, give me like two minutes and then okay. I'll be right with you. Perfect. Well, there we go, guys. Another amazing episode and another amazing show. I, Like I said, I want to thank Jamie so much for taking the time to come and do these two shows because important topics that have to be talked about. And I really hope that you guys start looking into this and doing your own research and really doing the work on yourselves. I think that's key. And I will say that over and over again until it gets into people's heads. You have to do the work on yourself. It's that important. That's the foundation that people need. And I think it's the foundation that people are lacking. They're not doing the work on themselves and looking for external answers everywhere, trying to find someone else to fix their problems. And it doesn't work that way. You have to fix yourself first and then start radiating, radiating that forward. So that's all I got to say, guys. Like I said, thank you so much. Your support means the world to me, guys. So take care. And I will be back with another interview very, very soon. Are you interested in the paranormal? Murder mysteries. Cryptocurrency and thought-provoking interviews. Then check out Crypt Rick's I've Been Thinking on YouTube. 
or every Monday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Studio A at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Welcome to the crypt. <laughs> 